Hello, hello, hello everyone. This is Irene with Soga Talks. Hello, subscribe to Soga Talks YouTube channel. Follow on LinkedIn and Twitter because I speak with fascinating people in tech and they share their expertise around digital transformation, AI, a tech for good, HR tech, insure tech, you name it. And today I'm so privileged because with me here, Giuliano Ligori, if I'm not butchering the name, welcome Giuliano. Hi Irene, thank you very much for uh, your invitation to join uh, our talk. Uh, it's a great to be here today and to chat about fascinating technology with you all. Pleasure is mine and also here with us today, Stu Bailey. Hello Stu, how are you? Hi, Irene. Really great to be here today with you. Thanks so much for putting this talk together. I think uh, it's very exciting. Lovely, lovely. I am extremely excited because Model Apps, the topic that we announced, really showed up in a lot of resources. If you're following tech news, if you're following tech articles and other tech podcasters, right? So what we want to know today, we want to shed a little bit of light for business leaders, for IT leaders, though who, who may not be familiar with the whole term model apps, although Gardner talks about it a lot, and other, of course, experts. So, Juliana, why, what is model apps and why is it important for the business today? Yeah, I guess for that uh, for new buyers, it's not so easy to understand what really is model ops. And uh, around the term ops, uh, many acronyms were born, uh, and therefore uh, there is a bit of confusion. Uh, I always make this a premise uh, in my article where I talk about model ops. However, I will try. I will. Uh, I, I will try to give you a simple but concise definition, almost academic. <laughs> we will say. So, model ops is a key enterprise capabilities uh, for end end to end governance of uh, AI initiatives across the organization and for ensuring that the maximum value is obtained for such enterprise AI initiatives while staying in compliance. It has become essential for AI initiatives that digital, digital transformation and of course for businesses since model ops is a combination of culture, practice, policies and tools that is the key to an organization uh, ability, ability uh, to operationalize AI, ML, and the analytic model at the scale. Um, I want to, to say that uh, the, uh, this uh, speed enable organizations to employ AI decisioning to better serve their customers, secure their business, and uh, compete more effectively in their market. Thank you, Juliana. Stu, why do you think model apps important? And I know it's gaining traction, right? The whole area. So what's your experience? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's really an exciting time here in the fourth quarter of 2021. Um, Juliana is right. The term model ops itself can be a bit confusing. For example, our company model op has a very close affinity with the industry term model ops. And so model ops is a critical piece of any enterprise AI strategy. Now in Q4 of 2021, that's getting a lot of attention because of the tremendous investment that the large enterprise specifically has been making in data science initiatives, driving toward enterprise AI um, outcomes, right? So for example, we served large financial industry, for example, large banking. You know, one of the largest banks in the world spends almost $500 million a year in processing um, customer support emails. So AI initiatives that can even drive a 10% savings on that is really doing, you know, real value creation in the organization. Uh, we also serve, for example, large um, insurance companies. Um, a, a early use case for one of our biggest customers for Model Ops Center, our software, is um, straight through claims processing. Um, you know, the ability for democratized insurance means there is just a lot more claims. And so to be able to 
process them straight through means a real investment in AI and enterprise AI is needed, right? On the fraud side, I think everyone knows we're all so connected. All of our financial transactions are happening at light speed and the acceleration of those. So the large financials and other organizations, manufacturing, retail is investing in fraud detection. The sheer volume of transactions to cover requires a investment in enterprise AI. So those are the things that are driving it. As model ops emerges as a key capability to ensure that those investments are governed end to end, that they really deliver on their promise, that all of the uh, investment in data science and building assets for enterprise AI, which we'll get to, are actually used in the business and can be audited fully. So the challenge is not the investment. We Most organizations have been investing and know how enterprise AI is going to continue to transform their business. It's ensuring that that transformational process of enterprise AI is fully governed end to end. Giuliano, let's uh, jump back to you because uh, let's talk about not only scaling AI initiative with model up, but basically what are the pain points that customers are solving? Why? Why should they really be focusing on model apps at this point? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your question. We know that uh, far and wide investment in artificial intelligence and data management are gradually increasing and uh, uh, new data science projects are underway to be predictive and analytics model for various purposes. However, while companies plan to scale up sophisticated AI solutions in a reasonable time, the actual reality is that the adoption of this solution is often started because companies generally focus more on development than on the operationalization of the models. For many non-digital native businesses, the uh, adoption of uh, the data science disciplines is uh, often begun with numerous self-contained uh, and fragmented data science teams uh, sprung up in var various business units uh, with the aim of building models uh, for, different, uh, for different business purposes. Uh, thanks to I can say also that thanks to uh, wide, uh, wide availability of the new uh, advanced technology at end and um, for the development of this model, company, companies um, uh, to explore this abundance of wonderful uh, technology to create increasing high performance AI solutions at scale must deal with an, an increasing com complexity uh, that um, it uh, affects production process and operation. Unfortunately, this approach has been adopted by many companies causing de decentralization and the fragmentation of data science teams with a consequ consequence shutdown uh, in the development of models and a total absence of collaboration between business units. As a result, business uh, are failing uh, to scale AI by accumulating um, unimplemented, unused, and outdated mo models. These are, of course, some, I can say, some pain, pain points that uh, prompted organizations to start investing in uh, a model ops capabilities. So let me say that uh, to outperform the competition, enterprises need to invest in artificial intelligence. However, the benefits of AI can, can only be uh, recognized once models are properly operationalized. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Yes, Stu, Stu, so we talk about pain points and it sounds like without thinking about model apps, starting AI initiative can be a challenge. So how can we round up kind of pain points with challenging, yeah, with challenging points? Yeah, that, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think again, the, for large organizations that have been investing in 
getting AI started, you know, this is a uh, five years ago, four years ago. So now these investments have run into the tens of millions of dollars within the business units, right, to build models uh, for things like municipal bond pricing or supply chain optimization. Um, when there's one or two of those things, then they kind of can get their own operational uh, cadence going in the business unit. But at scale, as the um, enterprise AI initiatives start to spread into every aspect of decisioning, the complexity of that creates tremendous pressure on the, on the, at the enterprise level for a need for governance. You know, and you can really start from the top. If the board is asking, where are we on all these AI-driven initiatives, all these model-driven initiatives, how many models have been built? Because the models are the ones making decisions. Have they all been, are they all auditable? You know, it, in most of these businesses, even ones that have been building models um, for a long time, that's been supporting human decisioning. In enterprise AI, the models make the decisions. So they need to be governed in the same way. So boards have questions and questions like which business units are effectively using uh, enterprise AI. So um, both the scale and complexity of initiatives and the requirement for enterprise visibility and governance is driving needs at the enterprise level that before model ops really wasn't able to be met because data science is a business unit concern. We have seen in many organizations, data science projects even grow like shadow IT around them. Oh, hey, IT doesn't know how to deploy these things. We're going to build our own little shadow IT just to support an AI initiative for a particular kind of um, um, you know, data science and model-driven business case. Well, that's fine, again, to prove the concept, but once the enterprise fully accepts that enterprise AI is the direction they're taking, now the rest of the enterprise risk, business, security has to get involved. So what's the mechanism to do that? Those are the pain points that really drive an organization to consider a model ops capability at the enterprise level. Beautiful, beautiful. So, Juliana, back to you, because both you and Stu mentioned business and IT, right? And we know how interesting in every organization those relationships can be. So, can you please shed some light on where model apps center should reside, you think? Is it owned by CIO office? Is it IT side? Is it business? Is it in the middle? Because this will define right the strategy and implementation. So to be successful with the model ops implementation, um, let me let me. I, I want to simplify the the process in a in a four simple steps. Point number one. Point number one. Uh, step number one. Start with a pilot in um, one business unit. Select a few high value models and probe the value. Uh, step number two, uh, rapidly extend the pilot and uh, onboard all, model, uh, all models across the enterprise on a model ops platform to achieve standardization across the enterprise. Uh, step number three, uh, don't limit, really important, don't limit the freedom of data scientists um, uh, to select the best data science tools to be the models, but uh, invest in agnostic model ops platform that can manage and govern all kinds of models. And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, step uh, number four, uh, manage early the shadow IT that uh, as we can see, when we can um, name shadow, shadow AI now, generated by business units uh, that uh, productionalize models using data science tools by introducing early a centrally located model ops platform that serves all the business units to orchestrate and govern all production models. 
Beautiful, beautiful sounds. It's, it's, yeah, tangible and practical advice, Joanna. Thank you, Stu. Where the center of model apps implementation should reside, you think? You know, in other, in organizational, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, um, that's a great question. Uh, and in the end, what we've seen, and we've at Model Op, with our platform model ops center, we've been focused on this problem in the large enterprise for five years now. So we have some customers that are fairly mature in their journey. In the mature end, model ops is owned by central technology because it is a technology platform. But unlike other technology platforms, it really um, aggregates the attention of risk, business, IT, of course, data science, uh, security, <clears throat> and any other stakeholders in models. Um, and so that is a journey to get on. And so Giuliani is right. It's good to start with a few motivating business use cases that have very high models with high business and or risk exposure that allows the organization to align. A critical uh, concept here, though, is that a model really for the first time ever becomes an enterprise asset. What do we mean by that? That if a group that needs to interact with the model, that might be a business group. These are the things making business decisions. It's a concrete asset. They need to be understand. They need to understand, are these business decisions correct? Are they driving top value? A risk group needs to understand why or have some um, validation or regulatory process that ensures that the model is making decisions appropriately for that business problem. A security group might, this is a piece of software that is running somewhere in the um, organization making business decisions, but it has libraries. Are all those libraries approved from an IT security perspective? And of course, the data scientists who, through their process of data science and data science platforms, crafted or trained or built uh, or discovered this model, is it doing what it's supposed to do from a data science perspective? So model ops's foundational concept is that models are an enterprise asset. And that's really a new concept for most large enterprises. So the idea of starting with one or two motivating use cases where high value models have a lot of enterprise level exposure is absolutely the right place to start that journey. Thank you. Yes, thank you too very much. Juliana, back to you. With your experience and with your knowledge of model apps adoption, can you please share with us some of the key challenges? Key challenges, because even if enterprise and both sides of that boat realize that they need, right, for governance and for tra traceability in model operations, uh, there's still challenges, I sense, for adoption. So in your experience, yeah, could you share? Yeah. Um, as a total leader in digital transformation, uh, who are the vice CIOs, Chief Information Officer, I think model ops represent a unique opportunity for uh, CIOs to, to lead the enterprise AI journey and move from cost center to revenue generation by unlock unlocking the significant AI and data science investment that companies have made in the past years and to keep the entire enterprise competitive. Uh, we think this, uh, the CIO organization, as I explained in, my, in, in one of my uh, last articles, um, then uh, uh, there are some, uh, some key resources are, are needed to implement a model of platform and the processes. Uh, first of all, the, the role of an enterprise AI architect um, uh, who will define the architecture and uh, collaborate with the business co compliance and risk teams. And of course, all, all with the IT DevOps team to design the model life cycle and automate it. Another important role is the model of uh, operator, uh, which is um, 24 for 7 operational role that supervises the model ops platform 
and uh, ensure that the system and the processes are working correctly continuously. It is, it is not a, um, a senior role, but uh, surely a very important one that have uh, to make sure that uh, um, there is a service continuity. Wonderful, Stu. Yeah, yeah. If I can turn this over to you. So, Giuliano mentioned the roles, the roles and around AI initiative as and as a consequence, model apps. Uh, can you share some adoption challenges, though? Because, yes, as yeah. organization, yeah. yeah. I would say, Irene, today, again, Q4 2021, what we see as the primary challenge is the organizational alignment around model ops as a as the key cornerstone the keystone of end-to-end -end governance for enterprise i uh enterprise ai initiatives so what do i mean by that so um there is a deep pers no one's ever bought a model ops platform until you buy a model ops platform at the enterprise level it's a net new innovative enterprise capability. Many organizations uh, prior to purchasing one may have tried to build their own. Uh, that was certainly what we saw in the marketplace two or three years ago. Um, again, you met, it's a very exciting time for us right now because the realization is there is a need, but there is still a tremendous amount of confusion and more importantly, perceived risk on getting a model ops capability uh, deployed at the enterprise level. Um, some of the risk that is perceived is, oh, we already have these data science programs going. Will it disrupt it in some way? Do we have to retrain our data scientists? But in a good model ops capability at the enterprise level, never puts an, any imposition on the data science uh, process or even platform. All of um, our customers, for example, have a variety of data science platforms. Amazon SageMaker, Data IQ, Data Robot, homegrown systems, and we see more um, fragmentation in that business in the in, or in those platforms in the business units than consolidation. So that's a perceived risk, not a real risk. Another might be, oh, but this is going to be a big lift. This is a model ops platform has to allow the model to interact with business systems, risk systems process drivers, um, security systems, CICD pipelines. That's a big lift. We're going to really have to think hard about how to integrate with all of those. Well, today, there that's really not. Like our platform, for example, and we would assume other model ops vendors make it really easy to just really click and integrate directly with configuration to existing enterprise systems. So it's not a heavy lift. Um, and then there's the risk team, which generally has uh, as many manual processes as any automated processes. And they say, how can we possibly interface with these data science platforms? We're getting more and more models coming, but a good model ops capability gets the right data to the risk team in an incremental way over time. So getting going on a model ops journey is really a low risk and even a low budgeted activity initially. And it really should top out at about a 10th of what an organization is gonna spend on data science and data science platforms over time anyway. It becomes a fixed cost to ensure that all enterprise AI initiatives are getting the best visibility and governance. So the perceived risk and challenges is really the biggest challenge for a large organization to get started on a model ops journey. Thank you, Stu. We did talk about risks. We did talk about challenges and pain yeah. points. What about the future? Can we look into, because as you mentioned, the area is growing fast. Organizations and leaders realizing the need and necessity, even necessity, especially around large organizations where you do have to think about productionalizing, up, uh, putting operations in place, I think, around models, yeah. right? So that it becomes a little more sophisticated and a little more robust capability within the organizations. Well, there's two things, and I think you brought up a couple of things. One is there's the perceived risk of getting a model ops uh, capability going, and that's very minimal. The real risk of not having a model ops capability is tremendous. As I, as I mentioned before, um, you know, 
for let's just take um, credit card line increases, for example, organizations that are using models to decide who gets a loan or who gets a credit card um, line increase. Um, that is a heavily regulated uh, uh, situation from the external regulation. A simple audit could be really devastating to the business, both in brand risk and financial risk. Um, on something like manufacturing or retail, you know, getting supply chain orders right, for example, not just the recommender stuff, not the things that marketing has been doing for several years, but key internal operational decisions that are now model based. If those aren't right, you know, and don't have the right visibility, that could be uh, existential in terms of revenue losses. And of course, in financial markets, if you're facing the wrong way on a trade that a model decided, you may be, you know, um, really in a in a serious financial situation. So. Um, not having end-to-end -end governance of uh, AI initiatives as they scale and proliferate and kind of get into um, the every aspect of the how the enterprise makes decisions um, kind of creates you know uh, a, a increasing ramp of risk. And actually, Gartner has been covering that phenomenon for a few years now. They call it the AI gap. You know, the more we put into building decisioning models on the data science side and the longer we wait for automating um end-to-end -end, uh governance of these ai initiatives with some with model ops capability there's this gap that's just widening and widening and widening which again creates actually exciting business <laughs> climate for model op our company right now um and so the future is really about enterprise AI initiatives. Like one thing that is becoming clear to everybody is that we're talking about models in the general sense, not in the machine learning only sense. So these could be decision table models. And there's some very, um, <clears throat> actually uh, very modern algorithms for building decision table models today. These are not just, hey, I'm gonna think if then else, but actually um, very, very uh, complex ways of um, training decision table models today. There are natural language processing models. There are a number of models that are not simply uh, neural net, machine learning type, or classic machine learning models. And there are still many legacy models that used in conjunction with some of these newer model types make a decisioning framework that is really enterprise AI. So when we talk about the future of model ops, we're talking about the destiny of enterprise AI Enterprise AI is the most important technical transformation in the enterprise sense, really the introduction of computers, because decisions now are being made on the model, by the models. So we're changing the way decisions are made through the fabric of the enterprise. If you look at Gartner's market guide, the first market guide for non-data science platform enterprise AI um, uh, capabilities in the enterprise, they call that their trust, risk, and information security management for AI market guide. It has five capabilities in phase one. One of those is model ops. Then that collapses to two capabilities in phase two. two one of those is model ops. So model ops continues in the journey of enterprise AI to be the foundation for governance at scale. Why is that? It's very simple. It's because models are making the decisions. They're the enterprise asset. They're the concrete thing that can be become the organizing principle for any enterprise-wide capability. So without a model ops capability, kind of the future of enterprise AI investments is greatly in danger in any large organization. Thank you. Thank you, Stu. Thank you, Giuliano. This is a fantastic talk we're having. And again, we're seeing how the works around model apps un unfolding right now. And I'm sure you, f you see the competition in that marketplace too with model app company. Right. So in conclusion today, I would like to finish with a few takeaways for the audience. And Julian, if you could restate for us, please, the connection between digital transformation companies going through AI initiatives they're looking to deploy 
already deploying and the need an absolute necessity in model apps capability within that enterprise stack. I think the relationship is deep, right? Digital transformation is something that every large diversified kind of non-digital native, right? That's a digital transformation. Not This is not the Ubers, not the Netflix of the world, is the classic enterprises that have been driving our global economy are continuing to evolve digitally. And because of the importance of that. But the sheer scale and opportunity in part of that digital transformation um, is what's driving in large part the AI initiatives. So those come as part of and behind the digital transformation investments and strategy. But now these AI initiatives create the model assets that are actually making the decisions that's fueling the acceleration for digital transformation. So you know, that is kind of a virtuous cycle or without a model ops capability, it becomes a vicious cycle because there's no way to govern kind of the accelerant of digital transformation, which is the AI initiatives. Um, so it's critical that, um, you know, that is the focus. The takeaway is just educate yourself and or help the organization educate themselves about what model ops is. It's a new capability for the enterprise. It's not easy to bring a new capability into the enterprise, but the necessity is paramount. So we're kind of most organizations are in this a little bit tough place. You have to get a new capability running at the enterprise level. Um, that hasn't been there before. No one has a model ops budget until you've actually bought and implemented a model ops system at the enterprise level. So education is absolutely critical. Um, and then don't underestimate how strategic model ops is. Even if you, if you're a say, let's say you're a SecOps DevOps person, you can see this happening at the technical level. Get yourself educated, but get the folks above you all the way sometimes and you often to the CEO to understand what important capability model ops is for all of the enterprise AI. And you, you may be surprised. And if you are a CEO and you're listening to Irene, which you should be, you know, ask yourself, do you know where all your AI initiatives are in terms of their journey, how they're getting, how the return is? What assets have been built? How much has actually been spent there? What different platforms are being used in the different business units? Um, do you have full auditability for all of these models? Do you know exactly where they're running? Have they all gone through the regulatory process that are needed? Do you know what regulations coming down the pipe? What types of internal controls will you need? Those are the things that if the board isn't asking today, they will be very, very shortly. So education is the key. And then if, if an organization can internalize that getting started um, with a modern model ops platform like Model Ops Center is really a low risk activity, then you're on your way. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Stu, very much. Thank you, Giuliano. Thank you both for the wonderful session. We're going to link. We're going to link Giuliano's article or be, uh, below this video in the description. We're going to link Model App website because that's where you can contact Stu and learn, of course, more because Stu full of experience and full of, of course, fantastic customer stories of success in, in this, um, yes, in the development area. So thank you. Thank you very much, Stu and Giuliano. Have a great day. Thank you, thank you very much. It, uh, it, uh, it was uh, really awesome to, to join. Thank you. Thanks, Irene. Yeah, and, and <clears throat> we're always happy to have folks talk to our customers as well so you can get kind of a full um, and unimpeded report about how to get a model ops capability working in the large enterprise. Thanks. Okay.